Mobsters in the Movies Who was the real Don Finucci? In the film The Godfather 2, Don Finucci was a freelance blackhand extortionist who operated in Hell's Kitchen, the neighborhood in which a young Vito Corleone lived at the turn of the century. He was believed to have connections with the notorious gangster Maranzala, which, if true, would make him untouchable. Finucci demanded protection money from neighborhood businesses and continuously preyed on his fellow Italian immigrants. Vito witnessed Finucci threaten local shopkeepers and indirectly lost his own job when Finucci demanded that his friend Genko Abandondo's father provide employment for Finucci's nephew. Incensed by this behavior, Vito watched Finucci wander the streets without obvious protection, but took no immediate action, even after he saw several street thugs attack the man and cut his throat. The wound was not fatal, and Vito notes as Finucci runs away that he holds his fedora under his throat to prevent blood from staining his signature cream-colored suit. When Finucci found out that Vito had taken part in several robberies with Pete Clemenza and Salvatore Tessio, he would collar Vito and threaten to turn him into the police unless they wet his beak or gave him a cut of their illegal profits, specifically by giving some of the dresses they had stolen to his three daughters. Vito knew a real mafioso would never turn someone into the police, and thus begins to doubt Finucci's connections. When Vito told Clemenza and Tessio about Finucci's demands, Clemenza and Tessio initially wanted to give in. However, Vito, suspecting that Finucci didn't have any muscle behind him, persuaded them to only give Finucci $100 of the 600 that he demanded. When Vito next met with Finucci, he offered only a fraction of the amount demanded, 100 of the $600 Finucci expected. Mi pare che ci sono 200 scudi sotto il mio cappetto. Finucci was impressed with Vito's courage and offered him work. Vito interpreted his ability to lowball Finucci as a sign of the latter's weakness, thus confirming his suspicions of Finucci's vulnerability. Vito followed Finucci to his apartment down the street and prepared to execute him. He grabbed a gun he'd hidden away in a chimney wrapped a towel as a makeshift silencer to muffle its report. When Finucci arrived, Vito shot him once in the chest. Before Finucci could react, Vito shot him in the cheek, terribly wounding him. He then fired the coup de gras, ending Finucci's life. The sound of gunshots were drowned out by loud music being played and fireworks being launched during a nearby parade. After the hit, Vito retrieved the money Finucci had taken earlier in the day and then destroyed the gun, dropping the pieces down pipes on the roof of the apartment building. Vito and his gang then took over the neighborhood and treated its people with far more respect than Finucci ever had. It was later discovered, due to lack of interest or reprisals following Finucci's demise, that he had in fact fabricated tales of his connections, or at the very least, exaggerated them. It is alleged that the character of Don Finucci is loosely based on an infamous black-hand extortionist and mafia boss from the New York area. His name was Ignazio the Wolf Lupo. Ignazio Lupo was born in Palermo, Sicily, to parents Rocco Lupo, and Onofria Sayeta. He has sometimes been referred to by his mother's maiden name Sayeta, but his actual surname was Lupo. From the age of 10, he worked in a dry goods store in Palermo. In October of 1898, he shot and killed a business rival named Salvatore Morello. According to Lupo's account, he had acted in self-defense after Morello attacked him with a dagger during an argument in Lupo's store. Lupo went into hiding after the killing, and on the advice of his parents, eventually fled Sicily to escape prosecution. 
After stops in Liverpool, Montreal, and Buffalo, he arrived in New York in 1899. On March 14, 1899, Lupo was convicted in absentia of willful and deliberate murder, reportedly due to the testimony of the clerks who worked in his store. Lupo would never serve out the Sicilian sentence, though he would one day return to Sicily. Upon settling in New York City, Lupo opened a store at East 72nd Street in Manhattan with his cousin Saeta, but moved his business to Brooklyn after a disagreement between them. In 1901, he moved his business back to Manhattan and opened a small import store at 9 Prince Street. Along with his import store, Lupo also opened up a saloon across the street, which became his base of operations. Lupo's father, Rocco, joined him in New York City in 1902, and together they opened a retail grocery store on 39th Street between 9th and 10th Avenues. Around this time, Lupo began preying on his fellow Italian immigrants using the extortion tactics of the Black Hand. In 1902, Giuseppe Morello acquired a saloon at 8 Prince Street, at the rear of the premises where Lupo was running his saloon. Morello had immigrated to the United States from Sicily in the 1890s and had been joined by his three half-brothers, Vincenzo Terranova, Ciro Terranova, and Nicholas Morello. Lupo became associated with the morello Terranova faction and eventually married into the immediate family when he wed Salvatrice Terranova on December 23, 1903. Lupo maintained his leadership over his Little Italy-based interests, but in the early 1900s, Lupo merged his mafia faction with the morello Terranova faction. Together they would form what became known as the Morello Crime Family. The Morello Crime Family was then the leading criminal organization in New York City. Lupo kept his base of operations in Little Italy, while Giuseppe Morello would operate from his base in East Harlem. Various members of their group, including Morello's half-brothers, led affiliated groups that ran the rackets with soldiers such as Giuseppe Fanero, Giuseppe Joe Cantania Sr., Charles Ubrazio, and Tommaso the Ox Petto, who was the top enforcer within the crime family. Lupo demanded absolute obedience from the members of his crew, killing one of his relatives because he suspected the man might be a traitor. His reputation became so fearsome that it was common for Italian immigrants to cross themselves at the mention of his name. Suspected of at least 60 murders, he was not caught by authorities until 1910, when the Secret Service arrested him for running a large-scale counterfeiting ring in the Catskill Mountains. He would be paroled after serving 10 years of a 30-year sentence. A few years later, he was forced into retirement by the emerging national crime syndicate led by Lucky Luciano. While there are definitely some similarities between Lupo and Finucci, the differences are far more resounding. While both were physically intimidating black-hand extortionists that were greatly feared within their areas of influence, Lupo had the backing of a large crew and was eventually the underboss of the most powerful family in New York, while Finucci is portrayed as a man without bodyguards and without backing, despite his assertions otherwise. Both were extremely violent, and their personalities projected such force that most people respected and feared them. Finucci had the reputation of a killer, and in the novel was said to have killed one of the three youths that cut him. However, Finucci forswore his vengeance, allowing the other two youths to pay him off. Lupo is suspected of murdering 60 people, and it is doubtful that he would allow anyone that cut him to live. Lupo was also steeped in the customs of the Mafia, as well as the law of Omerta. Due to this, it is also doubtful he would threaten to turn anyone into the authorities, let alone to do so. Finucci, however, made this exact threat to Vito Corleone. It was this brazen threat that helped to convince Vito that Venucci was not a true mafioso. At a glance, the man and the character are similar in several ways. They are both physically intimidating and violent with forceful personalities. They also engage in many of the same behaviors as well as having many of the same mannerisms. However, when one looks deeper, Venucci seems to be a paper tiger without the muscle or strength of will needed to be a true mafioso. Ignazio Lupo, on the other hand, was one of the scariest mobsters of that era and backed up his threats with actual violence. While the character of Finucci may be loosely based on Lupo, 
The two are far from identical. 